this viscast looks at a conservation of energy problem. Please pause and read through the question carefully. A good starting point is to draw a diagram which describes the system. So we have a skier which is leaving a ski ramp and the ramp is at 25 degrees to the horizontal. The skier leaves the ski ramp with a velocity of 24 meters per second and they return to the ground via some parabolic trajectory and their landing point is 14 meters below where they initially started. We're also told that they hit the ground with a velocity of 22 meters per second. Importantly during this journey through the air the skier is going to be experiencing drag. What's that going to do to the motion? The force of drag is going to be exerted on the skier opposing the velocity of the skier. So one way we could think about this is that if I didn't have any drag then I would go higher because my vertical component of velocity hasn't been reduced and I would also go further because my horizontal component of velocity would not be reduced by drag. So this is my drag free trajectory. My velocity at this point would be the same as that where I'd leave the ramp except it would be acting downwards. We know that from projectile motion. The velocity that the ski would have when they hit the ground would be larger than their initial velocity. So what is this question asking us to find? It's asking us to look at the mechanical energy of the skier and to find out how much it reduces because of that work done by drag. Recalling that drag is a non-conservative force and therefore conservation of energy doesn't hold here. So we can't say that our change of energy is zero. That's not the case. What we can say though is that our change in energy, the change in kinetic energy plus the change in the potential energy must be equal to the work which is done by that non-conservative force. That's the work done by drag. This is the quantity that we're going to want to find. It's the difference between the it's a difference between the initial mechanical energy and the final mechanical energy. So let's start off by doing our evaluation here. Our change in kinetic energy is the final kinetic energy minus my initial kinetic energy plus my final potential energy minus my initial potential energy and that's going to be equal to that work done by the drag force. So kinetic energy remember is a half mv squared so this is my half times mass times my final velocity squared minus a half times my mass times my initial velocity squared. We have both the initial velocity and we have the final velocity. When it comes to the potential, remembering we can have a choice of uh, which one is uh, going to be zero, because all we care about is the change in potential. And so let's take the ground as being my zero of potential energy. So the ground here is going to be my final position and therefore my final potential energy will set that to be zero. That means that my initial potential energy here is just going to be equal to m times g times that height which is 14 meters. Remembering that my gravitational potential energy increases as I move away from the earth and it decreases as I move towards the earth. So putting that into this expression, my final potential energy is zero plus zero minus my initial potential energy which is m times g times that height which is the 14 meters and that's got to be equal to the work done by drag. So at this point we can put some numbers into this. Um, I have a half is common between these two terms. My mass is also common which is 60. Outside of my final velocity was 22 squared minus my initial velocity that was 24 squared and minus uh, my mass which is 60 times 9.8 times 14 that's equal to the work which is done by drag. 30. Inside the brackets here 22 squared is 484. 24 squared is 579. And then this term here is going to be uh, 8232. 
and finally this difference is, is negative 92 which means we've got minus 200 uh, minus 2760 minus 8232 and so the work which is done by drag is minus 10992 joules so indeed the decrease in the mechanical energy is at 10,992. It's decreasing because I've got a minus sign here. I'm expecting the work done by drag to be a negative quantity because remember the drag force opposes the velocity. It acts in the opposite direction to the motion. So as my skier travels upwards, the drag force acts in this direction always opposing the displacement of my skier, hence the work is always negative. That's a little bit of assessment that we've done in looking at the sign um, of the uh, work due to drag. Uh, it has the correct units, so MGH has got a unit of joules as long as that's SI, same with my kinetic energy, so that's fine. We also have a bit of an understanding from this diagram of what the motion would be like if we were in drag free.